Well, Peter Kearney, right? I started my fishing business in the winter, 1963. The salmon fishing we started off with my father. A bit of lobster fishing too and all. And uh, we fished there from June on till the end of October, November. And then we spent a few years. I went to Wales then for... My sister lives in Wales and we stopped with her. We uh, went from 1st November to the end of May, so we came back then for the salmon fishing. The following year, 64. And I came back then for the salmon fishing in 65. And on the normal thing, what the salmon fishing and the crab fishing that year, it was in October and then back to Wales then, and Halloween, roughly, we were taking, uh, so I've seen that for seven or eight years. Peter Kearney of um, Kearney Oysters um, Limited. I started off fishing kind of at, uh, at uh, kind of 2009. I kind of had a wee bit of interest in the sea since a younger age, growing up, watching the boats and all coming in. And as a uh, years and on, like there was around 16 or so at the time, I got a job with my neighbour, Thomas Kearney, you call him, and started out from there. And we worked away, I started the crab fishing in 2009, and that was going well at the time. And I just did a surplus few, few pound, I put it into the oyster business, as my dad had a wee bit of oysters himself, here in Tobago Bay. And then in 72 then, we started off the fishing lobster, so there was a lot of crab in it, so we got a market down in Erigel. John, his brother of mine, the two started that, we sent a sample down to Erigel in 72. So uh, anyway, we put a sample away in, but see... The following week, they got the results back from the crabs and they couldn't get enough of them. That's, so, the year after that, we moved in, we got a bigger boat. And, uh, 74. So we stayed at home then, we, we fished there from that on then. Continued on the fishing then until about late 90s, well 90s. So crab fish, crab got a little bit scarce then. So we moved on then to the oysters then and 94, 95, that's 23 years ago. We decided then to move to the foil in 2013 or 2012, as you know yourself, with the wire in the north. There's no regulations on the rock foil, so we were more or less told that we could get any spot and work away. So we got a good wee bit of ground and we started off from there then, and it all went well from there on. Fishing was still going well. I done five years at the crab fishing, five seasons at the crab fishing and then it's kind of getting a wee bit too much then so I left it in 2014 and my brother then he's, he was involved, getting involved then and as the years went on he left school then, he was 16 and we're kind of working together since. No, we're doing well, at the, they're growing well and the machinery now making it a bit easier for everything has kind of upgraded a wee bit of machinery too and everything's working out good. We worked a small way in uh, Trabega here, but then had a big problem with the license. So we made it a little bit awkward to obtain the license. But when I went down first, there were actually no license. So we were down three or four years, so I had to remove all the trestles. And, uh, and the two boys, the older boy then, he came along then, uh, he took over from that. So we had to refuse the license, so we had to move on to the foil. Plenty of room down there, but why we refused, I don't know. We sell most of our stuff there into France, just. We have kind of a couple of customers there, but most of them go direct to France, and then probably China and maybe different parts of the world there, kind of Dubai and all, kind of wherever they end up. So they're kind of packed in France, and wherever our buyer gets a market for them, they're packed there in France and then wherever he used to send them, he sends them. Could be China, Dubai, Hong Kong and all that places like um all over kinda of, it's kinda of good meat in the foil too. Kind of a top grade special oyster. But that kinda of helps us too because you kinda of get top prices for them. You can invest a bit more with getting a better price and good quality stuff. Two boys to go over now. So I'm retired out of it now. So uh, it's a pretty long story but it's you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of history in that, you know what I mean? How everybody came through. And uh, like the fishing was, at least I stayed at home there. And, and I still have people remember getting to it all. And, and this fishing, this crab opened up. It sort of made a, a big boost to this area. Where this crab opened up in 72. A lot of men 
most of all the men used to go in England. But when they opened up, they were able to stay at home. Well, there are four to five of us there working away at the house just at the minute. Um, there's a good demand there now coming to Christmas time. Only for the file will be a bit like because the laws and the Irish seashores there is very tight and the licenses is very hard to get you wouldn't make a living with the regulations that they have and they're very slow with the granting you the license like we're waiting up to six years there now on a license for oh. Trebega so we had to move a bit of stuff out of it because the sites were just too small and you couldn't make a possibly make a living out of it due to that and the regulations are so silly like so we're kind of tied up with these licenses in Trebega it's just ridiculous it's so silly like the they should be showing more young people like into the trade, but where they're not like, there should be more kind of a classes to show in school maybe like describing what what way you can make a living out of your your uh, shoreline. But it just doesn't seem to be they don't want you there like it's kind of an eyesore. But at the end of the day, sure the land that you're on is no good for anything else. Like it's not beaches, it's just all rough shores. Like so, we may take something out of it for the Irish stuff. Mm, it's a very important thing to the, the community. I mean, immigration was nothing thing for. Me. You're going away you didn't want to, but there's an opportunity there. Good opportunity there. There's a good lot of people up the file there. Maybe up to about 100 people, 150 people employed along the banks of the file. You have 150 families maybe making a living out of it. And then that's not counting in all your lorry men. Your, like that, that's all divided up over the, the small area. That money's been spent in the, the local wee towns, the weekends, shops. You just wouldn't want to see anything happening now with this Brexit. You'd want to come to some kind of conclusion with it. Like fishing's a kind of a seasonal job too. You kind of there are too much regulations coming on that too. You kind of only have a couple of species to go for there. Like so, you're kind of you're sitting about a lot, lot like a fishing due to weather and regulations and quotas and all this here. And you're probably not allowed to do a lot of stuff that you should be allowed to do, like so salmon fishing and all. It was another. It's another good thing to have along with your crab fishing, but I would probably be fishing off and on, but I'd probably end up going away, probably like, if you couldn't make a living at it. I wouldn't be here only for it, and I'd probably be away somewhere. Trail here likely, or there are lots of big oyster farms out there, because I, I had a, a lot of interest in oyster farming from a young age. I always wanted to be at it, so here we are. I've granted a lot of licenses to Frenchmen in Ireland, but that's good, like, but it's not good because of the Irish are sitting there looking for small-scale oyster farmers are sitting there looking for maybe a hectare or two and they're not getting them where these Frenchmen can come in and just take 10 or 15 hectares and get it granted right away. It's just not fair, like, going on the small-scale Irish oyster farmers. There's opportunities there, but we, even the salmon fishing, the band of salmon fishing then, for many thousand people was making a lovely a livelihood out of salmon fishing. Around the coast of Ireland, you start off in Cork, and am working way all around the west coast, right in my own, the long slide around the whole way. So they don't have a feasibility study on it, they cannot study on it. The number of houses that were built from salmon fishing. Most of all the men came back from England, they had to go back to England. When the salmon fishing opened up, and then the crab fishing was most important, it was a big bonus to tell them. So they would all just stay at home, and they kept people at home, instead of running to America. But at the way it is there now, there's still immigration kind of taken up for the last number of years. The opportunity is here, but as the, as the people that's organising these things, the training, lessons, things like that, the people that's running this, they've, uh, they've their own way of doing things. They can't figure it out. They'd be lucky here to get a hectare, which is about, I think, 2.7 of an acre, or 3 acres. The gun boys are farming up to maybe 30, 40 acre sites, and there are maybe 10 or 15 Frenchmen involved in them, where money's all going back there. To keep sustainable the market every week, like to make a good way, make a wage out of it, you'd probably need, say, maybe six to seven hectares. You no, know, you want to have a bit of bulk too for tonnage wise. Like, if you have a good enough market, you want to be able to supply it too, so you need extra ground. The tighter ground you're in, the more oysters you've in it, they're less feeding. Where the more ground you'd have, you have the more spaced out and you have more feeding coming into the area and you have better oyster meat. They're just wedging in a wee small hectare, like, and maybe there will be 20 around you empty. It's very hard and small oyster farmer now here at the moment. If, you're, if they're granting these licenses, there's hundreds of jobs here in Trevega Bay. I was looking to bring to 600 applications waiting on for small oyster farm sites in Ireland. So you're chatting 600, that's maybe 2,000 jobs starting up, and then that'll lead to 10,000 maybe then overall. Even if it's the biggie there now at the moment, there's lots of opportunities there now. But it's the, it's the people that's running it, people that's running it, they can't see, they can't see the light. 